Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Gotham Knights and the Arrowverse as a whole. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. It was announced a couple of days ago that Gotham Knights is officially casting people, and we have three main stars who have been cast for the new CW pilot. So it's exciting to see it all go ahead because as you know, it's coming up in April when they're going to be filming the pilot. The pilot will probably last and film for about three to four weeks because pilots take a longer time to film. But anyway, just as a recap for you guys, basically Gotham Knights is starting off from the death of the Batman and that is where we're going to kick off the show and basically Bruce's son forges an alliance with the children of Batman's enemies when they are all framed for killing Batman. And so as the city's most wanted criminals, this renegade band of misfits must fight to clear their names, but in a Gotham with no Dark Knight to protect it, the city descends into the most dangerous it's ever seen before. However, hope comes from the most unexpected of places as this team of mismatched fugitives will become its next generation of saviors known as the Gotham Knights. And so that's basically the premise of the show, that's where we're starting off. And so let's go ahead and get into the casting announcements. So it was just announced that three different actors have been cast in three different roles and we do have descriptions of who they are playing and we're going to break that down bit by bit. But the first casting is of an actor named Olivia Rose Keegan. Now, I'm not familiar with any of these actors, I have to say that, but Keegan is going to be playing Dulia, and this person is most likely Dulia Dent, who in the comics is the daughter of the Joker, and so this is the description. So, described as abrasive, unpredictable, and a little unhinged, Dulia is above all a survivor. Born in Arkham Asylum and abandoned by her father, the most dangerous man in Gotham, Julia forged herself into a brutal fighter and a skilled thief. So that is who Keegan is going to be playing. You guys may know Keegan from the soap opera Days of Our Lives. That is where she is best known from. But in regards to the character, Julia Dent in the comics, like I said before, is the daughter of Joker. And this is going to be a thing in the show because as the description states, she is born in Arkham Asylum, aka where Joker normally is situated. And she was abandoned by her father who is the most dangerous man in Gotham, which is Joker. So I'm really looking forward to see this iteration of the character come onto the small screen for the first time. It's actually very exciting to get this direct link to the Joker. And I wonder just how unhinged she is. Is she going to be looking like the Joker? Is she going to be acting like the Joker? I really can't wait to see this character specifically, I think this is the character that I am most excited to see. So let's move on to the next thing. So the next person that has been cast is Navaya Robinson. Now I don't know if I'm saying her name right, I apologize if I'm saying it wrong, but Robinson is going to be playing Carrie Kelly, who is a fearless, idealistic and plucky as hell person, and Carrie talked her way into being Batman's unlikely sidekick. If there's a burning building or a person in need, she's the first to rush in just as long as she's home by curfew. And so you may know Robinson from some Disney Channel series like Raven's Home and also Being Mary Jane. I mean, I don't know those shows, but anyway, it's exciting to see this character come to life because in fact, Carrie Kelly in the comics is the first ever female Robin and that's going to be a thing in the show. I presume she's going to be called Robin, if not, she is 100% Batman's unlikely sidekick, as it says in the description, so it's great and she's fearless, idealistic and plucky as hell. I think she's going to be a good addition to the show and she's like a young kind of sidekick where maybe Batman had other versions of Robin in the past but then it was this version who eventually became his latest sidekick and obviously now Batman's dead, she has to kind of continue that legacy obviously in her own way, but now she's been framed along with these other people for the death of Batman, and so she needs to be careful about what she's doing. But I'm looking forward to this because I do like this character from the comics. I think it's very exciting to see a version of Robin in the Arrowverse. Yes, I know Titans is technically in the Arrowverse, but it's not really that connected. Like The only real connection we've had is that one scene in Crisis where we saw them, but apart from that, We've never properly had like a true Robin. Yeah, you've had like different hints towards different people and Batwoman and things like that. But I'm looking forward to seeing Carrie Kelly 
in the Arrowverse. And so, just in regards to Batwoman as a whole, we don't know how connected this is. Apparently, it's not going to be like in the same Gotham because obviously the circumstances are different. Batman isn't dead in the Arrowverse, or at least in Batwoman's Earth. And so you can presume Gotham Knights is going to be set on another Earth, but still within the Arrowverse. So there is opportunity for them to cross over at one point. Okay, so the next person and probably the biggest casting is Oscar Morgan. Now, again, I'm not familiar with his work, but he's going to be in the new Steven Spielberg film, which is very exciting. But Morgan has been cast as Turner Hayes, who is going to be the lead character of the show. So despite the murder of his biological parents, Turner remains resilient and driven to live up to his billionaire adoptive father's name. While charming and soulful, Turner has never quite felt comfortable in this world of wealth and privilege. So that is the character that Morgan's going to be playing, that is the titular adoptive son of Batman. However, you guys may have glossed over that and I totally did the first time I read the article because we were expecting like Damian Wayne, Dick Grayson or something like that, but instead the character who Bruce adopted is in fact Turner Hayes. Now, if you look in the comics, Turner Hayes isn't a character. This is something that they've made up for the show. Either it's an alias that they've just put out there, or it's just a completely new name and a completely new character that we've never seen in DC before. And this is, you know, the Arrowverse's and Gotham Knights' version of Robin, which they wanted to create from scratch. So I get that. I think there is a cool idea because there is no, like, expectation straight away. But I do think maybe a couple of fans are going to be a bit disappointed it isn't someone like Damian Wayne. I think we all kind of expected maybe Damian would be the character in the show because he's a bit reckless and I feel like he would fit in pretty well with the children of Batman's criminals. But nevertheless, I'm excited to see this new character as the main character of the show. Obviously, this is an ensemble show, but he's kind of like the main character. At least that's how they've been billing him so far. And so his origin actually follows something very similar to Dick Grayson with the murder of his biological parents and then he gets adopted by Bruce Wayne. And obviously with Bruce now dead under mysterious circumstances, he is now driven to live up to the name of his adoptive father, obviously Bruce. And so he remains resilient and driven and he's apparently charming, he's soulful and Turner still feels a bit out of comfort within the world of privilege that he's in that Bruce has obviously taken him into so I'm gonna be interested to see how he kind of fits into the show but it's cool to see that we've got this Turner Hayes character we've got the female Robin and also Joker's daughter so that's very very exciting so we do have two more castings I believe this was reported on just a couple of days before and so these are two characters who are going to be playing brothers and sisters in the show and so the actors are, in fact, Fallon Smythe and Tyler DiChiara. Again, I'm not familiar with their work, so they are casting people that are relatively unknown and they think maybe they could be a big thing on the CW. Obviously, the CW does kind of make stars out of people because they are very popular shows at the end of the day. But anyway, so Smythe is going to be starring as Harper Rowe, who you may know from the comics as Bluebird and she's teamed up many times with Batman, she's an ally of Batman and she's gifted at electrical engineering as this description says and so what she wants most of all is to repair the broken lives of her and her brother Cullen, the only person she trusts and so I'm very excited to see this character come to the show, I'm sure some of you guys are fans of Harper from the comics and Bluebird, I think her costume is going to be very cool when we see it and let's move on to talk about Cullen Rowe, her brother in the show. So DiChiara is playing Cullen, who after years of hiding his true self from an abusive parent, the transgender teen is tired of being polite and agreeable, clever and adept at reading human nature. Cullen is ready to fight his own battles. And so yeah, this is exciting. This is more transgender representation in the Arrowverse. I'm very excited about that. Like I said for the last couple of months, I really do feel like in regards to Nia and Supergirl, I feel like her story was really cut short. So I am hoping for her to come back 
but in the meantime, I'm pleased that they're continuing at least some representation of the transgender community in the Arrowverse with this new show. And I think it's interesting that we're going to get another side of it because we have Cullen who is transgender and obviously he's been hiding his true self from his abusive parents. But now he's able to be himself and to be at the side of his sister who will become a superhero at some point in the series, I presume relatively early on. He is going to be fighting his own battles, using his smarts and his abilities, so I'm looking forward to that and everything else that we've heard from Gotham Knights so far. But we have one last final thing to cover before I end this video, and this is a question from YouTube on my community tab. I asked you guys to send over some questions in regards to any of the shows. Got a lot of questions, we're going to be answering some of them later this week in other videos. But for now, this is Diego's question on YouTube who asks, do you think Cass, aka Cassandra Kane, Damien, aka Damien Wayne, or Duke, aka Duke Thomas, could show up in Gotham Knights at some point? So I thought I would answer this question because it heavily links into what we were just talking about. So these three characters are characters that are heavily linked to the Bat family, and this show clearly is very, very linked to Batman and his villains, and I mean, it's just like his children and his villains' children, so it makes complete sense that you would have characters like Damian Wayne maybe show up at some point. I think there is definitely the possibility. I think Cassandra Cain could definitely show up. And in regards to Duke Thomas, Duke could show up as the Signal, which is his superhero persona. And in the comics, he is a metahuman vigilante and he's the kind of daylight protector of Gotham, whereas Batman is, you know, the protector of the night. And this all follows on from the loss of his parents at the hands of the Joker, so I think introducing him would be a good idea considering that we have Julia Dent in the show, who is the daughter of Joker. So yeah, I do think at some point these characters could definitely show up. I feel like they're pretty high up on the list in terms of who may show up, but I don't have any inside information as of right now. That is just my personal opinion and what I think could potentially happen. But yeah, that about does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Gotham Nice video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.